Hi everyone, I wanted to discuss the ovarian cycle, the uterine cycle, and uh, each other, and the hormones involved in regulating these cycles. So I'd like to talk about the ovarian cycle first, and so that is shown in this box right here. You can see ovarian events. There are three main phases, and they're outlined here. The follicular phase right here, where you have growth of the follicles. Then you have ovulation, which is a one-day event. And following ovulation, you have the luteal phase. So during the follicular phase, you have growth of your follicles. So these um, uh, very not very developed follicles, your primordial follicles, will develop more into primary follicles. Some of your primary follicles will then develop into more secondary follicles. Secondary follicles are going to continue to grow. Uh, some texts will just use large secondary follicles. This text says it turns into a tertiary follicle, but these follicles are going to continue to grow and grow. And this is under the direction of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone. Uh, and so of course the Gonadotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus is going to cause FSH to be released from the anterior pituitary. So that increase in FSH is going to stimulate growth of your follicles. And you can see it tapers off after a little while. Uh, inhibin is going to be released that inhibits FSH. But uh, you do stimulate growth of the follicles during the follicular phase. And uh, during each month, there will be one follicle that will outgrow all of the others. So you have a mature or graphian follicle. Uh, and this follicle will ovulate. So uh, that means the egg, the oocyte, is going to burst out of this follicle. During ovulation, the reason that ovulation occurs is because of a spike in this hormone, LH, luteinizing hormone. Uh, you see this big spike right here. That occurs right before this line right here, which lines up with ovulation. It takes place in about day 14 of a 28-day cycle. So the egg, the oocyte, is released from the, the um, follicle, and now this oocyte is going to head down the fallopian tube um, toward potential fertilization. Now we're not done with the follicle yet. This follicle will turn into the corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum is kind of like a little miniature endocrine gland. It is going to be responsible for the production of estrogen and progesterone. And you can see if we look down at this graph below uh, very briefly, you can see progesterone, estradiol, these hormones increase when you have the corpus luteum made. So again, the oocyte, the egg, is headed down the fallopian tube. Corpus luteum remains inside the ovary. Now the corpus luteum is going to hang out for about two weeks or so producing hormones um, and if you have a fertilized egg then it will actually hang around for longer. It will continue to produce those hormones until the placenta is up and running, which is it takes about three months. If there's no fertilized egg, then this corpus luteum degenerates. So that involution, you have um, a reduced growth of the corpus luteum. It disintegrates into the corpus albicans. At this point, the corpus albicans is not producing any hormones, uh, and it's about done. You can see up here, we're starting to see a little bit of an increase in FSH again, this blue line, and these new primordial follicles. Um, are going to start turning into primary follicles. So this cycle, we're going to go right back to the beginning again. Primordial follicles can develop into primary follicles, some primary follicles into secondary follicles. So this increase in FSH stimulates follicular growth. So follicles continue to grow at ovulation, which is due to a spike in luteinizing hormone. This egg is released. The follicle turns into the corpus luteum, which secretes progesterone and estrogen. Uh, and after two weeks, if there's no fertilization that occurs, the corpus luteum uh, will degenerate into the corpus albicans. And then you continue to repeat the events in this cycle. Now the corpus luteum uh, can be saved from uh, degeneration, and that is due to the presence of human chorionic gonadotropin. So if HCG is being secreted by um, this egg that was fertilized, um, then uh, HCG is going to uh, save the corpus luteum from 
um, uh, from disintegration. In addition to the events happening in the ovaries, you also have events that are happening in the uterus. So the uterine cycle, and it's pictured down here on this bottom row, uh, the uterine cycle lines up well with the ovarian cycle. And this is so that the uterus is ready in case there is a fertilized egg. Uh, and there are several phases to the uterine cycle. You can see down here the menstrual phase, so that's when menstruation occurs or, the, or a woman's period. Then you have the proliferative phase. You can see a lot of growth happens here. And then the secretory phase. You have continued growth, uh, and there is also a very good vasculature um, and that happens here. You have very good blood vessels and you're secreting even more of this endometrium. Uh, if there's no fertilized egg, then this lining is going to slough off and again you're going to start the whole cycle again the next month. So three main phases to the uterine cycle. You have the menstrual phase, the proliferative phase, and the secretory phase. Uh, so you can see during growth of the follicles, that is when the menstrual phase occurs, uh, and then you're going to start proliferating. So this blue line here at the bottom is the stratum basalis, or the basal layer of the endometrium. It is always there. Uh, so the lining that sloughs off is this more purple area right here. That's the stratum functionalis, or the functional layer. Uh, and it is what grows and grows and grows and then is sloughed off. So you always have this stratum basalis, you um, grow and then slough off the stratum functionalis every month. So uh, while these follicles are growing up here during the ovarian cycle, you are finishing up your menstrual cycle and you start to proliferate that endometrium, make a nice thick home for a potential fertilized egg to implant. At ovulation, you have already quite thickened your um, your endometrium. But ovulation, it's still going to take about another six or so days for a blastocyst, which is the fertilized egg, and then the proliferation that occurs, the mitosis that occurs, that ball of cells. By the time it reaches the uterus, you're looking at somewhere around here. So that fertilized egg will reach the uterus and be ready to implant the uterine lining somewhere around day 21. And notice that the uterine lining is at its thickest during that time. The reason that you have this increased thickness right here is thanks to progesterone, which is going to be released by the corpus luteum. Corpus luteum will release progesterone and this estradiol. Uh, and progesterone especially is going to be responsible for all the blood vessels and the increased secretion of the stratum functionalis. So progesterone, uh, an especially important secretion from the corpus luteum. Estradiol is also being made. These together are going to help to uh, maintain the secretion of that uh, stratum functionalis. If you have a fertilized egg, again, HCG, that human chorionic gonadotropin, rescues the corpus luteum from degeneration, and you're going to maintain these hormones. As long as you maintain these hormones, especially progesterone, you'll maintain the lining, you maintain that nice, thick, happy, cushy home for the developing embryo. If there is no uh, fertilized egg. If there's no blastocyst that implants, corpus luteum degenerates within about two weeks. As that corpus luteum degenerates, progesterone levels die off. You can see they decrease pretty sharply right here as you have involution of that corpus luteum. If progesterone is gone, uh, also that stratum functionalis is going to go too. Progesterone is needed to maintain that lining. So if progesterone decreases, that lining is going to start sloughing off. Um, so you can see all of the cycles are very closely related. What's going on in the ovarian cycle, the presence of the corpus luteum, uh, the hormones that it secretes when it stops secreting those hormones, this has a direct tie into the lining of the uterus. Uh, and this is very important because when you have a blastocyst that results from the fertilized egg, you want it to have a nice thick uh, home for it to implant in. If this is not, if this lining is not maintained, you're not going to be able to grow that blastocyst. So these are how all of your events line up in the ovarian cycle and the uterine cycle.